Hey guys, if you want to achieve a clean sounding mix, you'll have to learn about frequency unmasking. So masking happens when you have two competing frequencies from two different tracks. It could be a kick and a bass. When the kick and the bass play at the same time, their frequencies are overlapping and one is masking the other. So in this video, we're going to learn about how to unmask those frequencies in our equalizers so we can get our mixes to sound just like the pros. Now let's talk about how we unmask frequencies. We're going to look at three different plugins. The first is going to be the Fruity Parametric Equalizer and how we can use that to unmask certain frequencies. Next, we're going to look at Isotope's Neutron EQ and how we can use that to unmask frequencies. And then lastly, we're going to look at the Sonable Smart EQ to look at how we can unmask frequencies. Let's get started. Now, the first example we're going to look at is the kick and the bass. So as you can see, I've loaded two parametric equalizers. The first one up here, so that's the EQ sitting on my kick. And then here it says 808, that's the EQ sitting on my 808. First thing I want is to analyze the frequencies within each one. So we've got to make sure we click the options, make sure the heat map is enabled on both of them. So now that I have the heat map enabled, let's play the beat. <laughs> So you can see right around the 100 hertz, both the kick and the 808 sub have fundamental frequencies there, which means what's going to happen is there's going to be some overlap. So there's going to be some frequency masking that's going to happen. So we have to unmask that. One way to do it is because I can see on the heat map, I can go to my 808 and roll off just a little bit around the 100 hertz range. <laughs> So now I've made room in my mix for the kick. But the problem with that is, is now I've removed a fundamental frequency in the 808 and that's not good. So we need to make that filter dynamic. And the way we can do it specifically with the parametric equalizer is to add a fruity peak controller on the kick that is going to control that filter dynamically. So as you can see, I've added a fruity peak controller on the kick. Now let's go to that 808. Make sure we have that filter selected. I'm going to right click on it and say link to controller. I've selected the internal controller, peak controller peak, and under the mapping formula, I'm gonna select inverted. Watch what's gonna happen when it's gonna play now. So now the base on my fruity peak controller controls where the starting point of that filter is. So what I need to do is as I increase that base on my kick, peak controller, you see that it flattened out that filter and it put it at the starting position where I want that starting position to be. Now watch what's going to happen now when the kick hits with my volume. See every time it kicked, it ducked down, but it went all the way to the bottom. So what you can do is adjust the volume on your peak controller. So it's only going to gently duck down that filter. See that? And you can also make it again wider if you want to make it a little bit wider. So let's replace. So what you've done now is you've made space for the kick dynamically in your EQ. So you're unmasking certain frequencies in your EQ. Now there's certain plugins that let you do this a little bit more efficiently. So if you do have them, I do want to show you how to use them. I've sold my cello and my viola to use that as this example because again, frequency masking doesn't just occur in the kick and the 808 or the kick and the bass. It could be vocals and guitar. It could be a synth. It could be various different things. So if you think about it, there's a lot of information that every instrument plays. And sometimes you'll have an overlap and one is masking the other and you want one thing to stick out, but it just sounds like it's all mixed together. There's no clarity there, right? So what we're trying to do is add clarity. Now I've added neutron equalizer on both of them. So you can see some of the little filtering I've already done. I've rolled off uh, on both of them, some of the low end, just because I want to make room in the mix for my kick and my bass. But let's say there's still some stuff that's clashing with each other. What I can do is on my cello, so I can click on the masking feature, click on the viola, and now it's dynamically showing me which frequencies are being masked. I can increase that sensitivity. Maybe I want the cello to be prominent there. Maybe I want my viola to be prominent there. But again, I can make space for one another. I can either roll it off on my cello or I can roll it off on my viola. And just to show you how this works, because I have these two linked inside of Neutron, 
what I can do is I can make just an adjustment here. I'm going to pull something off. I can say inverse link. So as you can see here, the dynamic link, as I increase it in my cello, my viola starts to roll off. So maybe I want that, that frequency to really stand out in my cello and I want it to roll off in my viola. So that, that's how you do it statically. So I can statically increase the frequency in one channel and then it'll duck it down in the other channel. So that's the inverse link that you can use in Neutron. However, I like to make it dynamic. So let's take a look at that. Let's assume that I want my viola to stick out when they're playing together. I want the upper range of my viola to stick out. The way I can do that is I can click on the viola, right click on the cello, say side chain to this track. Then on my Neutron Equalizer, I can click the cog up here, go down to processing, go to stereo aux in, select channel one and make sure it's enabled. Now my viola side chain to my cello channel. Well, why do I need that? Let's look at those frequencies again. Around here, I can add a band shelf that I can duck down, make it a bit wider. And as I duck it down, I'm gonna duck it down about nine decibels. And then let's click this icon here, go to dynamic. See, so now it's not rolling off nine decibels. I'm gonna link it to an external side chain. And you'll see as that viola plays, it's gonna trigger the side chain on this band shelf and it's gonna duck down that frequency to make room for that viola. See that? It's rolling down about two to four decibels. Now, if you find two to four decibels still too much, you can move it up. If you find that it's still, there's a lot of overlap, then what you can do is um, bring it down more. If you find the band shelf too wide, you can make it narrower, or you can make it wider. But basically this makes space now for the viola to, to come cut through the mix without getting masked by the cello. So this dynamically unmasks those frequencies. Now I do have to say for those who do have isotope Neutron, uh, Neutron actually comes in with a plugin called Neutron Unmask. So here on my cello, I'm going to go to that cog icon, processing. And then now when I play, watch what's going to happen. It's going to show me that there's some unmasking happening here. It's going to look at certain frequencies and you can control the range of where you want to pull it down. And let's see, is it, how close is it to where I had it? For me, I, I was pulling off around 1,000 to 3,000. Here it's pulling a little bit lower, around 600 to 1,000. But again, you can, you can control that. You can look, see here, I guess it's pulling from, okay, it's pulling from some of this over here as well at the 600 range. So again, there's multiple ways that you can go about it. Those are the two ways. So you can either use the unmask feature or you can use the dynamic EQ feature. The reason I like the dynamic EQ feature is because it's a transferable process. So as long as you have an equalizer that's dynamic, you can sidechain to it and duck down those frequencies. Not everybody has Neutron. I understand that. Hence why I gave the unmask option as a secondary option. But unmasking in an EQ can be done with any. So if you have Pro Q3, if you have any other EQ you can do that with. Lastly, let's take a look at Sonable Smart EQ4. Uh, this is done in Smart EQ3 as well. I recently purchased this in December, so I haven't used it on too many tracks to be honest, uh, but it has similar features. So I've added the Smart EQ4 on both my cello and my viola for the same example. And what I can do is I can create a group for them. So I can say add to group, let's call that group strings, create, and then now my cello is here. Let's go to viola, say add to group, strings, and now both of them are here. Let's learn both of them. So we have to click the record icon and let them play. It learns both of them. And then what I can do is I can select, okay, what is this? I can say it's strings. This one's a cello. This one, strings, it's a viola. So what happens now is I can load both of them on here. And if I put the strings in the middle, you'll see it takes preference to the viola and it makes some adjustment to the cello to make sure that it uh, unmasks certain frequencies so that way the, the viola can, can stand out. Now I think it's doing way too much to my cello. So I'm gonna take down its adjustment. And the other thing is maybe make it a bit narrower. Yeah, 
If I wanted the cello forward, you'll see what happens if I take it and put it in the front. You see how certain frequencies went up? So again, it's dynamically adjusting that EQ. If I put the viola down, it'll duck down certain frequencies and again, give preference to my cello because it's at the front and center. So without going into a tutorial about how to actually use this EQ, the cool thing that I like about it is it, you can make easy adjustments to instruments within a group. So again, if you have a lot of common instruments, let's say you had a whole orchestra, you could say which channel you want to be on the forefront, which one you want it to be in the middle, which one you can be in the back, and it adjusts the EQ of each one accordingly. And then you can see how easy it is to see all of your EQs or to see both those instances. So I can see both my viola and my cello uh, within my smart EQ that is actually on the, the viola. So if I click on the group, I can see both of those. If I close that, I can just go right into the EQ and make some, some adjustments. Just one thing to mention about the smart EQ as I open up the, the cello. Again, it's on the front. Uh, you have a mode that adjusts this shelf filter, this band shelf filter. You can see here it's making some dynamic changes. And then your mode can be triggered by the track. So just the setting. So I, I told this thing that it's a cello string. So it makes these changes. You can see the EQ changes it made. If I go to mode group, it's rolling off where it thinks it needs to be adjusted in order to sit properly with other tracks in those group. And then lastly, track and group. So it's making the adjustment that it believes is best for that instrument, as well as any other things within that group that are clashing together. And then you can also make it adaptive. So as I play... not quite a dynamic EQ because again dynamic you have certain filters that are dynamically getting triggered this one is adaptive where it, the whole thing is kind of moving around as it as it gets that input signal but yeah those are the best ways that you can go about making sure you create room in your mix so if you have masking a lot of masking that's occurring where you have clashing or overlapping frequencies make sure you unmask that's how you unmask with the Fruity Parametric Equalizer with Neutron or any other EQ, whether Fab Filter or any other one, or Sonable Smart EQ. Like I said, I just recently got it, but I'm looking to put on a few more tracks to see if I can get the benefits out of its smart engine. Now, if you like seeing these kind of videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this with somebody that could use this information. We're going to be dropping weekly videos. And again, the whole aim of this channel is to inspire you to go and make some music. Peace. Thank you.